Welcome, Ben Lemmer. Hello everybody, Kieran aka Retrolode here and uh, back with another new book review for you and uh, this is one that I'm sure uh, a lot of my regular viewers would have been expecting now for quite a while but um, it should have been a lot earlier but uh, somehow my first two books got lost in the post um, no doubt uh, as part of all the pile-ups um, that were happening um, due to Brexit, which um, delayed a hell of a lot of mail coming into the country while they sorted it all out. And uh, that was about the time that my books were on the way. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that both of my books got caught up in all that and somehow got lost. Um, my original books were shipped from America though. And this one has actually been shipped from um, the UK office because this book was actually released in the US first and now is available in the UK and Europe. So yes, it is the NES Omnibus. Um, as you can see by Brett Weiss, a good friend, um, over in the uh, US of A, and uh, with a foreword by Adam F. Goldberg from the Goldbergs, which you can see, which is pretty damn cool. Now, one thing I want to point out, um, first of all, is um, the book is huge. Um, you might be able to just see that, um, how big it is. I mean, I put my hand there, you can see massive, big, chunky hardback, and it has a slip cover on it as well. And um, what you can't see in the picture is actually that this is... Um, uh, ridged it's not flat I don't think the camera's going to pick that up at all but yes the buttons and that on the on the front there is yeah it's all ridged so it kind of sticks out so when you see it, it actually looks quite cooler uh, much cooler sorry than it probably does on the on the film I just noticed there's a bookmark that they shoved in there for me uh, Schiffer Publishing who um, who published the book uh, this is volume one because you may remember I previously reviewed his SNES omnibus that he did, um, which I contributed to, and that was split into two volumes, A to L, um, and then um, M to Z. Uh, this is, he's gone down the same route because there were so many games, um, again, it was decided that it would be split into two books. And like the SNES uh, omnibus, I have contributed to both books. So I've put some stories in there and stuff of my memories of some um, NES games and some other cool stories and stuff like that, along with lots and lots and lots of other cool people. As I said, it's a slip cover, so the underneath is exactly the same, but there's no, that's not ridged um, on that side. Uh, just the, the laminated cover that comes on it. So let's go into the book. Um, I'll just show you how thick it is actually as well, just so you can see, massive. Um, 424 pages so there you go absolutely huge i was actually slightly worried i wouldn't get it all in shots so <laughs> um but this shouldn't be too difficult to do because it being so big it's going to stand up quite well i don't want to show you the whole book um so i don't want to spoil it but i'll show you a bit of the beginning so we've got some classic adverts in here as well as the um the reviews and stuff as well um there's a list of uh, thank yous there So there's our forward by Adam F. Goldberg, obviously from the Goldberg's TV series, who's a huge, huge, huge uh, Nintendo and especially NES fan. So he shared lots of his own memories. There's some acknowledgements. And then it goes into the actual um, games. Um, as you can see, they are in alphabetical order. So what we've what we got is it's exactly the same layout as we had with the, the SNES book. So... Some of the games have got one pages, some of the games have got two pages, some of them have got more than that. The very famous stuff is like Mario and Zelda, as you'd probably expect. And it tells you all about the games. Um, then some, um, the details of, you know, who, who published it, what the year was, etc., etc. Uh, a description of what the game's about. Some quotes from back in the day. This is magazine clippings of what, you know, people thought about it back when it was released. And then the inside insight here, which is, you know, from somebody within... The, um, the, the the community at the moment who's probably quite well known. For example, that comment comes from Shane Steen, executive producer of the Game Chasers movie. So there's lots and lots of cool people who've contributed to it. Um, just turn a few pages in because actually I've got a contribution right near the beginning. Um, so there's, there we go, um, 720, the 10 gen game. Um, I was really into skateboarding when I was a kid. 
So 720 was a pretty big deal to me um, when it was released in the arcades and the subsequent home conversion. So I've shared some of my memories there, talking about my first skateboard and the fact I wasn't very good at skateboarding at all, whereas I had a few friends who were absolutely brilliant. So I was really jealous of, of their their abilities, but um, I enjoyed it nonetheless, and that's what matters, I suppose. So there we go. So it goes on like that. Um, so let's flick through a little bit more. So I don't want to spoil the whole book. I'll try and find one that's got the extra pages as well as I'm as I'm going through. I can't remember how many stories I put in this. Um, not all of the ones I wrote actually made it. I think there was maybe two or three that didn't make it in due to the space constraints but i still had loads absolutely loads that did because I, I wrote absolutely tons of stories because um um brett wanted to try and have a story for every game whether he was going to use them or not was another matter but so right up until the last minute he was pretty much asking if anyone could stick in any more stories and um there was some actually later on there was some ones that i i kind of assumed that people had picked up and when he gave a list of ones that hadn't been picked up, I was really surprised to see some of the games that people hadn't written stories for. So I ended up writing loads, writing loads more. So there's a story, there's a story there, actually, I did about Arch Rivals. Barbie, Bard's Tale. A box art, obviously, screenshots for each one, which is lovely. Battle Tales. Blades of Steel, that was another one that I wrote. So Blaster Master there, you'll see it's got two pages. And I think there's uh, it's two insider insights. So there's more than that, actually. But it's still, some of them have got more than one insider insight, especially the big games, as I kind of said, like, you know, the Marios and the Zeldas and stuff like that. So there's a few that I really wanted to write stories for as well, but I didn't get the chance to because, I say, they'd already been snapped up by other people. But there's loads of cool people who've, who've contributed to this book, as you'll find out as you go through. So obviously, just to give an example there, there's Castlevania. So that's got a story from the immortal John Hancock. Dracula 2, Dracula 3. Oh, not Dracula. Castlevania, even. Chiller. So that's got Patrick J. Hickey and 8-Bit Eric, Eric, Eric Perez gave stories on that. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Contra there. Always popular. Oh, I just want to you show some of the art um, there. I think that was done by Thor Thor Valderson. I think he used to do, I think it was, was it Game Pro magazine? I think it was one of, it was either EGM or Game Pro. For some reason my memories escaped me. I think it was Game Pro. He used to do art for them back in the day and he did some lovely art for this like he did for the, um, the SNES book. Uh, Double Dragon there, Double Page. I gave um, a really long um, story actually for Double Dragon. That was one of the games that I was surprised that no one else had written for. Um, really surprised. Because I have a really, really good story about um, Double Dragon on the NES when my neighbour bought it. And I bought the Atari 2600 version on the same day. So it's a really cool story about that and our little rivalry that we had. Shout out to Martin Milburn there, actually, my friend who was my neighbour back in the day. He's probably not watching this, but if you are, there you go. I have to tell him I gave him a shout out, maybe. He's not really into games anymore, but he's got good memories of his uh, childhood and owning an NES and living next door to me, of course. There's Gauntlet 2. I think it was another one I wrote. Yeah, it was. Yep, yeah, Gauntlet 2. Ghostbusters. That was another one I wrote, actually. Ghostbusters there. Gremlins 2. Moon Hook, Ice Climber, that was another one I wrote. Again, really, really good memory of that with Martin because it was the first um, game he bought for his NES. And he got it. So we played it no end in the two-player mode. Still love Ice Climber. Still um, 
one of my favourite uh, NES games, undoubtedly. Toby's Adventure, double page spread. Clax. There was another one I wrote actually, it's Clax. Well, Starfighter, so towards the end now of the reviews, it's Legend of Zelda, so you can see there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight insider insights, it looks like for Zelda. Four pages. And that means Lethal Weapon Life Force. There you go, that. Loops, it was another story I wrote. Yeah, Loops, love Loops, absolutely love Loops. One of my favourite puzzle games, one of my favourite NES games. Uh, a lovely story about the Power Glove by Zoe K. Howard. It's absolutely fantastic. Really, really good story there, talking about the movie Wizard Oz it was in. The comic book video games of the NES by Blair Farrell. Um, lots of those, really good ones as well. Stuff like Turtles, obviously, probably one of the most famous ones. But DuckTales, um, Classic, and Batman, which is actually a really good game on the NES. And then there's a special thanks to Kickstarter and Early Book Adopters at the back, because... Um, like the SNES book, he did actually do a Kickstarter for this as well, alongside the pre-orders. There's a little bit about Brett there. Uh, looking very cheery uh, in the corner there. So there you go. And the back cover there, lovely, with some cool box art from NES games. And who doesn't love box art? So this actually has the price there. It's $49.99. Uh, I'm not sure what the, um, the UK price is. It's probably something similar. Um... Maybe a little bit less, probably about 40 quid, I would guess, um, without checking. I'll have to put a link, actually, underneath the um, the video of where you can buy it. I always try to do that. But as you can see, another absolutely outstanding, top-quality book um, from Brett. And uh, I've looked at a few NES-related books. In fact, literally last week, I covered um, the um, Playing With Power um, NES book. I've also covered before... On my channel, um, Pat Comtry's um, NES Compendium that he did. So that was another one that I've covered on the channel. So there's been a few um, over the years that I've looked at. Um, this one is undoubtedly the best one, by far the best, um, because it has all the box art, which strangely didn't have in, in Pat's book. Um, the splitting it into two books was definitely the right move because it's amazing he can cover every US release. I should just emphasize that actually, it's US release because obviously he started covering. Japanese stuff would be there forever and um, there are some uh, European PAL exclusives as well for the NES believe it or not despite it not being that massively popular in PAL regions um, but there are some uh, Rodland springs to mind for some reason um, but yes um, so he covers every US release and um, I can't wait to see what the second book um, has to offer um, I'm sure it'll be just the same um, equally good quality I think that's due um, in a few months time I believe um, but yes, easily the best NES compendium out there. Um, the most detailed has the best, um, pre best presented in terms of the layout, the art and everything like that being used. And also the insider insights. He's got some really good names there um, who have contributed their stories. And um, I love reading those stories about people's personal memories of the games growing up. And I, and I was really happy that um, Brett asked me to contribute again um, to the book. And um, I really enjoyed... Um, living up some of those memories and um, yeah obviously just a big, big shout out to my, my, my next to neighbour Martin again because most of his memories are associated with him because as I said before I didn't own an NES growing up at all but because my my direct next door neighbour did I live in a semi-detached house so his house joined mine um, I used to spend a lot of time playing on his NES and he used to spend a lot of time playing on you know like my Atari 2600 and then we both upgraded to an ST so we used to share share games with each other and he got a Lynx so we both had an ST and a Lynx so we used to share a lot of our games and then um, Mega Drive as well and Jaguar actually so we, we followed the same the same path after that but in the early years I had my Spectrum my 2600 and he had his NES and uh, we usually used to jump over the, the fence um, in our garden we had a low bit of the fence we'd jump over and literally just go around each other's houses we almost kind of lived at each other's houses all the time it was great uh, nice having someone next door the same age as me um, so yeah, loads and loads of happy memories of my childhood in there. But yeah, uh, if you are a Nintendo fan, if you're especially an NES fan, then um, this book is a must-have, and I suggest um, you go out and get it right now if you haven't already. Um, I've been the Retro Lad. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my review, and I'll see you all again for another one very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.